The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And coming up on the news at noon, the teen accused of shooting and killing this Duval High School student expected in court today will break down what to expect. And yesterday's rain has moved away. Some sunshine's moving in today. We'll talk about today's afternoon highs and what to expect for tonight and beyond with the seven-day forecast. And later, the Commanders are 2-0 to start the season for the first time in more than a decade. We're going to take a look at that big win in Denver. And good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for the News at Noon. I'm Mark Hall. This afternoon, we start with developing news. That teenager accused of shooting and killing Jada Madrano moore while she was walking home from the Val High School, expected to appear in court. DC News Now's Liberty Zabala has the latest on what we're learning about the suspect. Well, police say that that suspect is a 17 year old male from Glen Arden, and they say that he killed Jada Madrano Moore after a fight broke out and Jada tried to step in and stop it. Now, officers say that Jada was walking home from school last Monday when a fight broke out over an ongoing petty matter. The fight broke out between students from her school and Charles Herbert Flowers High School. Her father and police say Jada tried to step in to protect her brother brother and that's when police say the suspect pulled out a gun and shot her. The suspect goes to Charles Herbert Flowers High School and is now facing first degree and second degree murder charges as well as gun and assault charges. He will be tried as an adult. The impact on our community is unquestionable. It's unquestionable. People deserve to live in places that are safe and our kids deserve not to die. And that bond hearing for the suspect is set for this afternoon. Meanwhile, the funeral service for Jada Medrano Moore is set to take place this Wednesday. For now, in Upper Marlboro, Liberty Zabala, DC News Now. Liberty, thank you. In the wake of Jada's death, Prince George's County officials are working to tackle teen gun violence at the source. Now they're asking for the community to stay involved through anti-violence workshops. The county held the first of these workshops Saturday, and their focus is on relationship building and mental health. One of the most important things we can do is make sure that children have a very strong connection with their parents, with their communities, with their schools, so that they feel like the gang that they're already in, the one that is their family, and is their school community is the one that they need to belong to. Uh, several more workshops are planned in the county so people can still get involved. Meanwhile, a teenager is recovering after being shot in Southeast DC yesterday afternoon. And officials say that it happened on Walters Lane around 8:30. And as of right now, there's no motive or suspect information. We're working to learn more info and we'll bring updates as soon as we get them. And new this afternoon are over 4,000 D.C., Virginia, and Maryland health care workers voted to approve a strike at Kaiser Permanente. The strike is set to happen if a new contract agreement is not reached by the end of the month. The health care workers say that their salaries have not kept up with inflation, and they say that understaffing is putting patients at risk. Now, this comes as more than 60,000 Kaiser Permanente workers in other states have given strike authorization. Now, if that happens... It would be the largest by healthcare workers in U.S. history. Union officials say that Kaiser's proposals make the staffing crisis worse. Taking a live look at the National Cathedral, partly cloudy, or some would say partly sunny. We, we had some rains earlier this morning. The question is, what will this afternoon and this evening look like? Heading over now to meteorologist Scott Sumner. He's in for Damon Matson. Latest check on the forecast. Scott, I have to tell you, Temperature wise, this is my kind of weather. Yeah, we were talking about that off uh, camera here, Mark. And yeah, 70 degree readings are right up your alley. Same with me, too. I got to tell you, I, I don't mind 70 degree temperatures, although some will uh, disagree with me. We're at 73 right now, and we have mostly cloudy skies across the area as we look at the National Cathedral, as Mark just said a moment ago. Now, with regards to this afternoon, we had some earlier morning showers that have cleared out. So we're going to see again a transition from the overcast skies that we saw yesterday in the cloud gloomy rainy day to more of a little bit more sunshine this afternoon and going into uh, tomorrow as well. We're already starting to see that a little bit further off to the south and the west of the area, but 
this low has to get a little further north before we really see a little bit more clearing in our general vicinity. But rainfall totals here, uh, we're certainly welcome and wait till you see some of the rain amounts some of our weather watchers called in with some good news there. Over the last 24 hours, uh, Lexington Park reported a little over an inch, but outside of that, there have been random amounts anywhere from maybe a half an inch or a little over that, a little under half an inch to a third of an inch, up to three quarters of an inch, down to about a quarter of an inch or less. So yes, widely varying amounts of rain over the last 24 hours, and we won't be seeing any more rain here, at least in the short term. Uh, we'll see that more towards the end of the seven day period here. For today, as you can see, the highs uh, stay in the 70s, 78 about the district, 75 over towards the Rockville area as we pan a little bit further to the south, looking at 77. Quite a bit of those numbers are uh, running from Waldorf over towards Fairview Beach and uh, Fredericksburg, close to uh, 80, uh, about 79 degrees there. Madison, 77 degrees, 78 over towards the Washington area. Moving up towards uh, the Cumberland Valley, 76 at Hagerstown, and then out towards uh, the mountains here, 60s in the higher elevations, 70s elsewhere. So again, we're looking at uh, numbers that are a little below normal, but we'll get up to normal as we head towards the middle of the week. And tonight, we'll see a temperature range between 47 and 57 degrees. We'll have that seven-day forecast and a look at the tropics coming up as well. Hey, Scott, thank you. A new at noon, Virginia Democratic Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton announced that she will not seek re-election after being diagnosed with progressive supranuclear palsy. Wexton was diagnosed with Parkinson's this past April after additional testing. She learned that she had PSP, which she's calling Parkinson's on steroids. PSP is a rare neurological disorder that affects body movements, walking and balance, and eye movement. Wexton plans to serve the remainder of her term, then retire to spend time with her family. Well, today is D.C. Council's first day back to work after summer recess, and committees are hitting the ground running. Right now, the Public Safety Committee is hearing from community members on four crime bills the council is taking up. In July, council passed an emergency public safety bill. Here's D.C. News Now's Lex Juarez with how these new bills fit in the council's plans. Now, the four bills that are being discussed do include a lot of what is in the emergency crime bill that's currently in effect in D.C. That's because that crime bill as an emergency bill does expire in just about a month. Now, when we look at the specifics of what are in these four bills, one of them will strengthen protections against the most vulnerable people in our community. That's seniors and children. Uh, council wants to look at the statute of limitations for certain crimes. And they also want to talk about what is admissible in court and adding to what is admissible. Another bill aims to tackle carjackings that by helping drivers get wheel locks or lug nut locks onto their cars. Another bill will expand the private security camera incentive to small businesses right now. That is an incentive that's only for community members. And finally, the committee will also be hearing from the public regarding how physical evidence is handled when it comes to sexual assault and domestic violence cases. Right now, crime as a whole is up 28% compared to this time last year, but specific to the bills, motor vehicle theft is up 109%, sex abuse up 8%, and robbery up 67%. Now that committee meeting is going to be ongoing throughout the day today. It did start at 10 o'clock this morning. They do have people from the public speaking in the public hearing. Anyone who is speaking did have to sign up by the end of last week. However, anyone who is tuning in can still give their input to council by emailing their council member and they can find their email for their specific council member on the DC Council website. There's also going to be an opportunity for people to re-watch this committee meeting. They can also find that recording on the website as well. In downtown DC, I'm Lex Juarez, DC News Now. Lex, thank you. Metro police say that a woman is dead after drowning near Chain Bridge along the DC Maryland border. Montgomery County Fire and Rescue say that a group of two dozen people from an out-of-state college kayaking group were boating on the Potomac River Sunday. One woman was pinned under a rock inside of her kayak. Other people hurried to help but before, before EMS arrived, but she was pronounced dead at the scene. D.C. police are now taking over the investigation. Well, Montgomery County Fire and Rescue investigating several cases of arson in Gaithersburg. Officials say that about half a dozen fires happened early yesterday morning and investigators believe that they all are connected. Those fires include several vehicle fires and businesses. 
Now this morning, business owners are feeling frustrated over the damage left behind. Both some is a uh, vandalism or somebody do that. Uh, I really feel bad about that. But the fire department says the damage is significant. No injuries were reported. A spokesperson is calling the fire suspicious. Officials say that one person is in custody. And tomorrow, lawmakers in Capitol Hill will be considering a new bill to revitalize the RFK Memorial Stadium site in Northeast. That legislation would allow D.C. to lease the stadium site from the federal government. D.C. would then be able to use the land for stadium redevelopment, commercial and residential development. Well, Washington Commanders start their season 2-0 and oh for the first time since 2011. And this after the Commanders came back in the second half to beat the Denver Broncos 35-33 yesterday. The Commanders were able to pull out the win after the Broncos failed to tie the game up on a two-point conversion attempt as time ran out. Quarterback Sam Howell says that he's happy his team could pull out the clutch dub. This is a resilient team, um, and the thing I'm proud of is we had each other's back on both sides of the ball. Um, and that's what good teams have to do to find a way to win. We knew there was a lot of football left. Um, obviously, we would have liked to come out and start a little better, um, but at the end of the day, we made the plays when we needed to make them, um, and that's what matters. All right, Commanders continue their season at home this Sunday against the Buffalo Bills. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. Coming up on the news at noon, we're stretching your dollar with housing prices on the rise. We're breaking down ways you can save.